Yes, guys, you know what time it is. It's your boy, David, at the Irish Head, Ireland's number one Spurs fan, bringing you a very uh, special guest today for our Christmas special here at the Irish Head. It's Matt Hayes, the transfer guru. How are you? I'm all good, David. I didn't get the memo for the, the, the Christmas wear, but I'm, I'm loving the glasses, I have to say. Oh, don't worry, they'll be on your live watch long for the Stoke game, lad. Don't worry about that. <laughs> So, um, yeah, look, basically, I, I wanted to bring you on today just to uh, kind of ask you basically who you think we're going to sell and um, who you think we're going to buy in this January transfer window. Because as everyone knows, mm-hmm. you are the transfer guru. So so why don't you tell me, the Harris Army and everyone else that watches out there, um, what you think the plans will be for the January transfer window? Um, well, I, I think it, it could be a busy uh, January for Spurs. And I think the form in the last week or so could uh, could influence that a, a bit more than, than anything else because we, we know... Jose Mourinho may have missed out on one or two of his main targets in the summer and a few players haven't really performed to the expectations this season. So there could be a bit of movement um, as Spurs try and uh, go for a strong end to the season. Of course, uh, potentially a League Cup semi-final uh, and final to come. You know, The final now has actually been pushed back to April, which is a weird one. Um, but we could be in for a really hectic end to the season if things do go to plan in the Europa League, FA Cup as well. Um, so squad depth could be the key for that. Um, now there are a few players who are almost definitely leaving the club this January. And the first one of those, although it won't be a sale, uh, is Jed- Jetson Fernandez. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of people, <laughs> myself included, have at times forgotten he even plays with Spurs. Um, of course, he was brought in, I think it was in, in January for a year and a half loan with the option to buy for over £50 million. Uh, ne- next summer, there's no way that that option to buy will be exercised. And he hasn't made an appearance for Spurs uh, in the league this season. So uh, I think it's it's all but guaranteed that he will be heading back to Benfica in this January transfer window, which of course frees up uh, a space in the squad. For for other departures, Danny Rose is one people have been mentioning, but it kind of feels like that'll just be one where Rose will just tip away with the reserve squad till the end of the yeah. season and potentially move on then for uh, with a free transfer and he'll be free, of course, to decide who he joins then. So I don't think just we'll see the, more than Danny Rose. Just on the Danny Rose team, uh, Matty, do you think that's a case of um, Levy just being stubborn? Like Because for me, mm-hmm. look, I don't think we're actually going to get much resale value. I, I really don't believe it. Um, I think I think if he was to go anywhere, it probably it probably will be on a free because um, I can't see any clubs taking a risk with this guy. So do you think maybe that Levy just w- w- won't terminate his contract just out of stubbornness because of what Daniel Levy has come out and said about the club before? Yeah, look, uh, Danny Rose, he went to do that interview with the Sun and it's, it's not the only time he's really spoken out against Spurs. And I think, you know, we were all expecting it to end kind of sourly once that did happen. He was still in the squad a bit, but, you know, his performances started to suffer and then he started saying these things about the club and it it was just a recipe for disaster. And I think it's come to the end we were all expecting. Um, I think it was at Watford or Sunderland, he tried to force a move through to um, last summer. So he yeah. is, he's wanted to leave the club. He's not in Jose Mourinho's plans. He's not in Daniel Levy's plans. Um, I think the... The interview or the meeting between Danny Rose and Jose Mourinho in the Amazon documentary, I think, tells us all we need to know about that. But I, I, I doubt there's any real desire for Daniel Levy to move Danny Rose on because at the end of the day, his, his wages won't be that much. You know, it's not it's not the biggest uh, thing for Spurs having him sitting there not really yeah. doing much. He is a, a decent player for the. I think he's played a bit with the under twenty three squad this season. Where if they need him to step in, he's an experienced head and look, he's a decent footballer at that level. It has to be said. So he's good to step in there. So he does he does still offer something small to the club. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine Daniel Levy will be too keen to, to get any money back from him. Of course, under the Bosman ruling, he, he can negotiate a contract, a pre-contract agreement with uh, clubs outside of England in January, which will uh, set him up for a move on the 1st of July. So I think if, if we do hear something with Danny Rose in January, it will be that, but I expect him to move on um, in the summer. Deli Ali now is, is a player that uh, a lot of people will be keeping an eye out for in this January window. We heard from Fabrizio Romano last week that there are huge chances Deli Ali could leave Spurs this summer. Whether or not that will be... a uh, a permanent deal uh, remains to be seen. There is talk of a, a year and a half long loan to Everton uh, and they will then hope to sign him in the summer of 2022 on a permanent deal. Uh, PSG were interested last summer. They made three loan bids for Deli Alli. They could be a team who could come back in. And if they do come back in, I do expect it to be a, a loan deal there. But of course, there is it could be permanent. No one really knows how that's going um, to play just, out. And, yeah, go on. Uh, just, just on the Everton um, bit of news there, Matty. Like, for me, I'd rather, if we are going to sell him, I'd rather just sell him rather than this 18 months with an option to buy sort of crap. Uh, mm-hmm. what, 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 what's your point of view on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the loans with options to buy when we're on the selling side. Because if we're buying a player, it's perfect because we've seen how that worked out for Jensen Fernandez. You know, we could have forked yeah. out 30 or 40 million pounds for him last January and we would have been left uh, absolutely shocked at what we'd done. But because we have that, had that option... Uh, to, to make a permanent or not. We put ourselves in a really good position, whereas Benfica themselves are in a dreadful position now where they're getting back a player who hasn't played in six plus months, is extremely low on confidence. And, you know, you, you imagine he'll find it hard to hit any sort of form there. 
So what we're essentially doing is we're, we're giving a player to Everton who, if he does really well, Everton will then buy permanently. But if he doesn't, we're getting back a player who is, is perhaps yeah. in a worse in a worse state than he is right now. So for a selling club, I think it's a, it's a really bad option. But you know, if it is what Daniel Levy feels is the best thing, he, he's done very well in the transfer window in the last couple of years. So I think we would have to have to put our trust in him and if he's not in Joe Simmons where Stelly Ali moving on opens up the, the space to bring another homegrown player to Mary Gray um, one who's been mentioned potentially next summer but if it is a year and a half down the line when Ali would be leaving permanently uh, you know uh, anything could change in that time frame Harry Winks is someone who I know you've spoken about quite a bit in your channel uh, you had the, the debate on here recently with uh, with Alex and Marcelo and look I, I think there's a, there's a, a big split down the middle of the Spurs fans base, fan base yeah. on this one, as, as was shown in your debate you know some people are saying he's a homegrown player. He's, you know, he's 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 a fan of the club. He's been fantastic for us in the past. Whereas other other people are saying he's just not good enough. He he doesn't get into our team. There's no point in having him there. And I, I'm kind of finding it hard to to pick my place in that because there, there is kind of that sentimental side of things where he is a Spurs fan. You know, he's he's homegrown. Yeah. He was he was so pivotal. He was such a he's a Pochettino player essentially, but he's not a Mourinho player. Is the other side of things, and he's just not good enough. He doesn't get into our team. The thing is, Marcelo's staff for me ended that debate that he's created three chances over the course of his career. You know, oh, it's it, 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 like that stat says it all for me. Do you know what I mean? As soon as he came <laughs> out with that stat, that like that debate's over. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah. you, like, look, you still have people on the other side of the argument. Oh, but he's not there to to create chances. But like, look at the end of the day, just from what I see, I I, I don't think he's good enough. But look, like I, I can understand people like sentimental and stuff like that. I guess if you're that sort of person, whatever floats your boat. For, but for me, it's no reason to be keeping a guy, especially if we want to go on and win trophies. But um, mm. anyway, uh, what, what what do you think, Wings? Do you think like do you think it'd be more? Do you think we could get rid of him in January? Do you think it could it could happen in the summer when we uh, get a skip back? Uh, what, what's your opinion on this? Yeah, I, I think it'll be the summer before anything happens yeah. with Harry Winks. Um, I, I, he's a decent squad player. He's he's had a few good appearances in the Europa League. Um, and you imagine, like, if of course there's uh, we're in the round of 32 now in the Europa League, so there's four um, double leg double legged fixtures left in that. So you know, if we go out and we beat Wolfsburger uh, comfortably in in the the first tie, he's the type of player that could then sit in in the second tie. Yeah. He'll he'll do a job for us, and he'll give the likes of Hoybier and Damelo Celso a, a bit of a rest because we will need them, of course, for for a league game. So he does offer us that side of things. And I think Deli Ali is in a similar boat to that, but there seems to be more uh, more of a desire to move Deli Ali on. Yeah, but Winks, I like. I don't think he'll want to leave the club, but I feel like he'll realise that for, for his career, it is the best thing. And, you know, yeah. Tottenham can't, they can't argue that because he's sitting on the bench and he's, he is a, a utility player for us right now. You know, he's not, he's nowhere near that first team. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but I, I can't remember seeing him too often in the Premier League this season. Um, so I think there, there were talks recently as well that he's called a meeting with Jose Mourinho to, to try and discuss these things. And I, I can't imagine that would have gone very well for him. So I, I think the summer of 2021, I think we'll see Harry Winks move on. But just... Just on the fact that he said, um, you know, he he kind of has one eye on the Euros, Garrett, Garrett, um, Southgate Euros squad. Mm -hmm. uh, and look, if he doesn't get much game time, I think he'd be very lucky to make that squad. So, do you think it, it, if if the right opportunity comes around in January and 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 we can kind of line up someone else, do you think do you think that is a possibility that that could happen? Just off on Wink's behalf, the fact that he does have one eye on the Euros and that he, you know, he could end up trying to force through a move or because I honestly don't think a loan deal uh, I don't think I think that's out of the window a loan deal for six mm -hmm. months do you think like it could become a case where he might force 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 a transfer through to be honest I, I, I think even if he does get game time he'll be very lucky to get into that England squad because he just hasn't been good enough this season yeah. and there are a lot of players in that uh, squad who have been so much better you know Declan Rice and Jordan Henderson um, are the first two names that spring to mind and I, I think Harry Winks will know how far he is down that pecking order but if he is going to make a move away from Spurs this January, it will be to the likes of you know a, a lower mid-table team. Uh, if, if he's lucky, you know it, there could potentially be. A, I I don't know if it will be a loan deal, but if it is, it could be to a team maybe fighting relegation or even at the level he's at a team at the top of the championship. So yeah. I think a lack of game time at Spurs would have the very same effect as game time at just a really poor club because he's not going to play well. And there's going to be uh, like Declan Rice playing in the West Ham team that's playing yeah. really well this season. Rice, one of their best players, you know Jordan Henderson. Uh, is, is running that Liverpool team at the moment. So yeah. th there are going to be players just higher up in that pecking order. And no matter what happens this January, I just can't see Harry Winks being in that England squad. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Gareth Southgate has already ruled, it, ruled out um, his potential involvement in that tournament. Which, look, yeah. it's, it's a big blow for Harry Winks. And, you know, he's had good appearances for England in the last couple of years. Um, I think he captained them in, in one friendly as well. So it did look like there was a good England future there for him. 
but things have just gone very wrong for him very quickly. And I think from his point of view, he needs to focus on getting his career back on track uh, in the long term rather than looking six months down the line thinking, I want to play in that tournament because it's just not realistic yeah. for him and yeah. he, he should have uh, bigger things on his mind. Um, and just There's one more player who um, could potentially be leaving this January. It's one that not a lot of people have been speaking about, which which yeah. has kind of surprised me, but it's it's Paolo Gazaniga. And, you know, he's he's essentially fallen off the face of the earth. Um, with with uh, Joe Hart coming in, I think we all felt he would be the third choice goalkeeper. Uh, he'd be kind of just a, an influence in the dressing room. But we saw straight from the first day of the season against Everton, Joe Hart was on the bench and we just haven't seen Paolo Gazaniga since, yeah. which is, is unfortunate for him because he's deputised really well to Hugo Lloris in the last couple of seasons. You know, there's times when Lloris was injured and he was suspended. And Gazaniga, for the most part, came in and did a great job. And that is why I think th there's a, a difference there between Gazaniga and the other players is that when he's been on the pitch, Gazaniga has played well. So I do think there'll be a number of Premier League uh, clubs looking at him uh, as a potential uh, replacement for whatever goalkeeper they have now. It may sound uh, weird. How much do you think his resale value will be, mate? Oh, I don't think we'll get too much. I think we'd be lucky to get £15 million just because he's he's not playing for a team. But if yeah. it is a, a competitor at the top of the table that could be looking at him, which I know sounds a bit weird, but Everton right now, you know, yeah. they're just not in a good position with goalkeepers and they have been linked with Casaniga in the last year or so, uh, more so when he was on really good form. I think Liverpool were mentioned as well, which I, I can't see happening at all. But I think £15 million would be lucky to get in for uh, for Gazaniga, which, look, we take, he, he's the player just sitting on the bench. We have young goalkeepers like Brandon Austin who, who could come in and be that third-choice goalkeeper. Of course, Alfie Whiteman, uh, yeah. an older keeper, recently made his first appearance. So there, there are choices there. And I, I think it would be better for everyone if Gazaniga does move on and go somewhere where he can get the game time uh, that he does deserve. Um, no, I think that that's all the players that I've identified as ones that uh, could potentially leave this January. Are there any that you think I've missed? Um, Sanchez, um, just do you, do you think if we can get a deal for Skriniar, do you think that's the, that's the end of his time? Do you think think we could be looking to, to sell him on? Or, or do you think that, uh, again, he'll be there till the summer, really, and then we take it from mm. there? Yeah, I, I think he'll be there to the summer. Again, he's just a good option to have for Europa League games especially, but I'd be really, really surprised if Sanchez does move on this January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was I was thinking that myself. Like, I think the only reason if, if you do see him go is if we can get Skriniar at, at an affordable price for Tottenham and it, and it's mm -hmm. it's the right thing to do in my opinion. But look, we'll wait and see. Like, for me, I, I think Sanchez probably will be there to the end of the season uh, and then we'll take it from there. No, the most interesting part, the one that everyone wants to hear, who, who have you identified that you think we could bring in? Um, well, I think Tottenham's main targets for this uh, January transfer window would be an attacking midfielder and a centre-back. Uh, it's looking likely it'll be a left-sided, pacey centre-back as a replacement for Jan Vertonghen. Um, we certainly attacking midfielders, and one that I've been talking about in my channel and that a lot of people have been asking for that won't be happening this January is Dominic Shabajloy. You know, I've spoken about it with you uh, quite a bit already. Uh, a really, really talented uh, young midfielder. He's 20 years old. He's from Hungary. Uh, he plays at the moment for Orby Salzburg. Incredible midfielder, a dead ball specialist. He can score from range. He can he can pick out passes. He can you know anything you can want from an attacking midfielder. Shabazzai offers that, and he's only 20 years old. And I think a lot of Tottenham fans really wanted to see him come in, but it looks like he will be joining Orby Leipzig uh, in in the next couple of days. It was actually expected to have been announced by now, which um, as far as I'm aware, it hasn't. He was available yeah. for really, really cheap. It was a £22.6 million pound release clause that has to be activated before the turn of the year and then paid in full uh, within two weeks of January. And it looks like Orby Leipzig have activated that. It's Fabrizio Romano saying that's uh, as good as done. I don't think he's given it his here we go just yet, but um, yeah. it's only a matter of time on that one. And what that does do, uh, in a way, is frees up a potential departure from Leipzig for Marcel Sabitzer. Now, again, another midfielder yeah. Tottenham has been linked with. Another one that fans really do want to see. You know, you said yourself how when Leipzig came to Spurs in the Champions League last season, Sabitzer ran the game. Uh, he, yeah. he scored two in the return fixture as well in Germany. He's an exceptional player. He's uh, an Austrian attacking midfielder. He's a bit older. I think he's he's 25 or 26, but he has that experience, yeah. uh, which may be the only thing that Shabazzai is lacking. Uh, a, a similar type of player, in a way, you know, Shabazzai likes to play off the left and can't drift in the middle, whereas Sabitzer would be uh, primarily a central player. But again, extremely talented, technically, gift, technically gifted footballer. is attracting a lot of interest from, uh, from European clubs. But I, I think Tottenham... Uh, I, I do think that there may be a chance to pull this one off. It's unlikely at the moment, but yeah. I think the type of player that we're looking at, I think he fits the uh, he fits the bill absolutely perfectly. And I would not be surprised if Tottenham uh, went all out to try and get that one done uh, this and summer. How much, how much do you reckon he could, he he could uh, what fee could he demand? Do you reckon? Uh, 
it's a weird one because the, the the quality of player that he is, I think we could be looking at 50, 60 million pounds. But what we've seen from in recent years from RB Leipzig is their players tend to have relatively low release clauses. Yeah. Like Timo Werner was one of the best strikers in Europe last season. Chelsea got him for, I think it was 55 million pounds. So I'm, I'm not too sure the, the clauses in that contract. I haven't seen any reports suggesting whether it might be a low or high release clause or if there is any there at all. But I yeah. think this, is, this could be a really clever transfer for that reason because... Leipzig, you know, they have all these sister clubs around the world. They have Orbi Salzburg, they have Red Bull New York, and there's another one or two out there. And what they're doing right now is is kind of how they do run things. They pick it, pick up a young player from uh, from these teams and they sell on their better player in that position. Then they build that player up. And it's just, it's a repetitive cycle. And yeah. it looks like Sabitzer now could potentially appear that will move on. So because of that transfer strategy, because they, they don't splash the cash on huge players, they don't really need to attract huge fees for their players. So I think yeah. that, in that kind of way, Sabitzer could be a, a really, really clever signing. But uh, it remains to be seen, even if he is willing to move on from Leipzig, especially in the middle of a season. Um, uh, as far as I'm aware, he won't be cup tight if we do bring him in because they, I think they've differentiated now between the Champions League and the Europa League. Um, yeah. And even the group stages and the knockout stages with those uh, cup tight things. So that wouldn't be a concern if we did get Sabitzer. Uh, now looking at centre-backs, Milan Skriniar, it, it's still one that's rumbling under the surface. He was our, our, our main transfer, our main centre-back target in the summer, but we just could not get that deal over the line. And it seems to be down to the valuation that Inter Milan have put on Skriniar because they want 50 to £60 million. Pounds. It's, I think, £50 million pounds plus 10 in add-ons, which Tottenham just couldn't meet in the summer because of the money we'd already spent on the likes of Regalan, um, yeah. Poitier, and, and all that. So it was a financial thing for Spurs in the summer. Uh, Fabrizio Romano has said quite a bit, and he, he hasn't actually changed his narrative on this. He, uh, he still believes that Tottenham are expected to go back in for Skriniar in January, and that it remains the same. If they pay £50 million, they will sign Milan Skriniar. And the way it was in the summer was Skriniar, he wanted to join Tottenham, he was willing to join Spurs, but he didn't mind staying at Inter Milan either. So it, it's a weird one in that the club aren't too, aren't too pushed, the player isn't too fussed about it either. So Tottenham, if they want to get the player, do just need to pay the money. Uh, and what I would be concerned about with this transfer is, what we're hearing in reports lately is that Jose Mourinho wants a left-sided pacey centre-back yeah. as a replacement for Jan Bertongen. Now Skriniar isn't that player, he's right-footed, he plays on the right-hand side, and he wouldn't be the quickest player in the world. For me, he's kind of a very similar centre back to Toby Oliver um, yeah. which is look, there's a bit of a clash there. And there, there are a number of, of less sided centre backs uh, that that fans are looking for. Uh, I think they had up in Meccano is one of them. Um, yeah. And look, I I can't see I this one. Yeah, they have a release clause of forty odd million, which is cheaper than Sabitzer. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And look, again, it's another Leipzig player, so I'm, I'm sure that same sort of uh, theory applies. But I think Upa Meccano could be someone who would just attract a lot more interest from bigger clubs around the world. Yeah, uh, You know, Barcelona right now are in a, a really poor position defensively as well. And I think he could be the type of player that looked to bring in a young centre-back, uh, could play alongside Langley, you know, his his fellow French international, uh, and he could go out and move there. Real Madrid, of course, could look for him Bayern Munich. There's just so many bigger teams that I think could be in for Upa Meccano because of the quality that he has. And the potential he has to go on and become one of the yeah. one of the best centre backs in the world. So at the moment, I don't think Tottenham have identified uh, a potential centre back, or at least it hasn't been reported if they have identified a left sided centre back. Um, and off the top of my head, I or even looking at uh, ones around the world, I can't really find one that 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 fits Tottenham in terms of the the demographic of player Jose Mourinho is looking for because it tends yeah. to be players around kind of 25, 26, They're experienced. They've won a bit in the past. Uh, and we could get him for, for a cut, uh, cut price. There aren't too many out there that seem to fit that demographic, but with the scouting team in place at Tottenham, uh, the, the coaching staff Mourinho has, and of course Mourinho himself, I would not be surprised if they find that perfect player uh, who, who will fit that bill and potentially come in in January. But for now, I think we just kind of have to sit here uh, and just wait for uh, any sort of indication on that and who that centre-back could be. Um, but yeah, th that's pretty much what I think our transfer strategy will be in January, an attacking midfielder and a centre-back and potentially a few players moving on. Yeah, that's perfect. Look, there you have it, guys. Just a quick a quick Christmas special for you. Thanks very much for Matty giving up his time. And um, happy Christmas to you, Matty. You've helped me out big time this year, and I honestly can't thank you enough. Yeah, and thanks, William, for having me, David. And Merry Christmas to you as well and to, to everyone watching. It's been a pleasure coming on here, and you've been a fantastic guest on my channel a number of times as well, so I owe you just as much. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. And as always, um, oh, sorry, quickly before we go, a happy Christmas to everyone else out there, the Harris Army and everyone else who may be watching. Um, I hope you just really have a good day and enjoy yourself. And um, take your mind off the Premier League for a day and go and get drunk. As always, in Jaws, we trust. And come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs.